Hey everyone, Nick Marzinski here at TrappingLight.com. In my last video, I discussed the tone curve in Lightroom and Photoshop and how it can be used to adjust the contrast of specific tonal values with your image. From there, however, I want to turn to a different feature of the tone curve, this time in Lightroom only. And specifically, I'm going to be talking about the individual red, green, and blue curves in that tone curve tool. And I'm going to talk about how they can be used to create a cross-processed look in your image. So let's start off with talking about <clears throat> what cross-processing is because some, some of you might not be familiar with it. Basically, it works like this. When film processing is being done in the dark room, each kind of film has a separate chemical solution that you would use to process that film. So for example, color negative film would have a specific kind of chemicals that you would use in processing. So would black and white film, so would color slide film, all that sort of thing. With cross processing, what you do is you switch the chemicals that you use to process the negative. So for example, you would process color negative film using chemicals that were designed to be used for color slide film or for black and white film. Okay, and doing that processing your film with the wrong kind of chemicals typically gives you these really weird and interesting shifts and, and, and uh, changes to your color uh, and your color balance in your image. Now with digital, we can reproduce these kinds of effects pretty easily and the best way to do it is using the RGB curve tool in Lightroom. So let's get started. Okay, now the effect that I'm going to show you here requires that you're using Lightroom 4 or later. So if you're using Lightroom 4 or 5, you're fine. If you're working in Adobe Camera Raw, you're going to need to be using the version that was packaged with Photoshop CS6 or Creative Cloud. Prior to the 2012 develop module, these RGB curves weren't available in the tone curve tool, and that's really what we're going to be needing. So if you're using Lightroom 3, you're not going to be able to have access to the tools that we're going to be using. Okay, now to get to these curves, you're going to, curves, you're going to need to be in the develop module, so that's where I am. And then I'm going to go into the tone curve uh, panel here. And in this tone curve panel, you're going to have to make sure that you're working in the edit mode, which is activated using this little button here. So you can see when I hover over it, it says click to stop editing in point curve. If you open the curve tool and this is what you see, you're not going to be able to edit your color curves here. You're going to need to click this button to switch over to the point editing tool. And when you switch over, your default here in this drop down channel is set to RGB. So we've got this channel drop down here, which we didn't have in the other. Um, uh, version of the tone curve tool and this is what we're going to need to use to get to the various color curves okay <clears throat> and in the last tutorial that i that that i had on that i posted uh to the website i was using this rgb um, curve to make those tonal contrast changes my changes to my contrast in this tutorial we're actually going to be switching from the rgb curve to these red green and blue curves that are also available to us in Lightroom 4 and 5. So let's get started with that. Now when I select a different curve, I'm going to select red. The first thing that you're going to notice is that my histogram changes. So this is the RGB curve with the actual curve that you see up here in the histogram palette. You can see this histogram here in the tone curve. When I switch to red, you'll notice that the histogram in the tone curve here changes. And the reason is, is because before when I'm working in RGB, I'm working with all three color channels. And so I'm seeing the histogram that corresponds to all three color channels. But when I'm selecting red, I'm only seeing that portion of the histogram that corresponds to the red channel. So these points that you see, these high areas that you see in the histogram here correspond to areas of the image where there is a lot of red. And in this case, those areas are this muggle t-shirt that my daughter here is wearing, okay? And when I was working with the RGB curve, moving the curve affected the tonal, uh, the, the, the brightness of an image. So if I move the curve up and to the left, it brightens the image, okay? In the same way, if I move the curve down and to the right, then it darkens the image. When we're working with color curves, such as this red curve here, it's a little bit different, okay? Because we're not affecting brightness, we're affecting the amount of a color that's in the image. And in this case, we're affecting the amount of red that's in the image. So when we move the color curve up and to the left, what we're doing is we're increasing the amount of red that is in the image. Okay, it's not brightening the image exactly, it's just simply increasing how much red is there. Okay, in the same way, darkening things by dragging them to the 
down into the uh, to the right, um, it doesn't darken things when we're working with these uh, individual color curves. Instead, what it does is it takes the color away. So when I drag it in the red channel, I drag it down or to the right. What it's doing is it's decreasing the amount of red that's in the image. And in order, and the way it does that is that it increases the amount of red's complementary color. It adds more complementary color, more of the complementary color to red. In this case, it's cyan. So you can see that the image takes on this cyan sort of sort of tone. Okay. And you see the same sort of thing when you're working with any of these color channels. In the case of green, if I drag it up and to the left, it's going to add more green to the image. If I drag it down and to the right, it's going to take green away. And the, reason, the way it does that is by adding the complement of green, which is magenta. And then finally, with blue, if I drag it up and to the right, I get more blue. If I drag it down excuse me, up and to the left, I get more blue. Down and to the right, I get the complementary color of blue, which is yellow. Now, before we had tools like um, the uh, like this white balance slider here and this tint slider in the basic panel, um, color curves in Photoshop, because Photoshop has always had these red, green, and blue curves. Lightroom only got them with Lightroom 4. But in Photoshop, this was a way to adjust the white balance in your image by manipulating these color curves. Nowadays, there's not much of a reason to do that anymore because we've got these temperature and tint sliders. However, these color curves that we've got here in Lightroom now are very, very helpful at being able to achieve that cross-processed look that I was talking about. Okay, And by varying the shape of these color curves, we can really create any kind of cross-processed look that we want. So I'm going to give you a few recipes. I'm going to spend the rest of the tutorial giving you a few recipes just to get you started thinking about how you can use these tone curves to create interesting cross-processed effects. And the one that I'm going to do first is going to really kind of brighten the image and add uh, a lot of yellow to it. So here's how, here's how it goes. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the red channel. And, and when I get to the red channel, I'm going to drag this point on the bottom over, and that's going to add the complement of red, which is cyan, to the darker areas of the image. It's going to kind of push the red away, but it's going to push it away the, the most in the darkest portions of the image. And as you get towards the lighter areas, more of that red color is maintained. So I'm going to start off with that. Then I'm going to grab this and just drag it down a little bit. And I'm going to add another point here and drag it up. Okay, so that's it for the red channel. And now I'm going to switch to the green channel. Now, typically when I do my cross-processing in the green channel, I don't do a whole lot because green also controls um, the luminosity of an image. And so I really don't want to manipulate that too much. Most of my edits to the green channel when I do a cross-process look using these color tone curves is to simply just give it a slight S-curve, which is what I've done here. And then finally, I'm going to switch to the blue channel. And I'm going to drag this point up. And which is going to increase the blues in the darker areas of the image. And then I'm going to drag a point down here, which is going to increase the yellows in the lighter portions of the image. And you can see how that works. In the blue portions of the image here, or in the darker portions of the image here, like the Hermuggle shirt, you can see that it's taken on a lot of blue. But in the lighter portions of the image, such as her arms, her face, and this background, it's become yellow. So we're removing blue from the lighter portions of the image and we're adding it to the darker portions of the image. Okay, and right now we've got a pretty interesting cross-processed cross look going, but there's one additional change I'm going to want to make. And that's I'm going to switch to the RGB channel and I'm going to darken my shadows just a little bit. I'm going to raise this up quite a bit and then manipulate it here till I get something I'm happy with. And I think that that works. So that's one recipe for a cross-processed look. Switching to another image here, this is an image I took um, at uh, uh, a park that we went to with my kids. I kind of thought that this idea of a, a water fountain, where I'm from, we call it a bubbler. Um, but this water fountain was kind of interesting because it had an exposed pipe here. And I thought about doing something with where I've got all of the, um, uh, the, the leaves and the bricks and the wood here. There's some interesting... Um, uh, textures going on. I thought it would be interesting to convert this to black and white. But before I do, let's try a cross-processed cross look to see um, what I can do. So I'm going to start with my red channel again. And in this point, at this case, I'm going to add a really steep S curve. 
I'm going to drag that back up to the middle, and then here I'm going to just really pull that out. Okay, switching to the green curve, I'm only going to just do a really slight curve again, and I don't even know if I really wanted to add, well, let's add a little bit more green. It's kind of interesting on the, uh, on the plants up there. And then finally with the blue, I'm going to move this on the bottom over just a little bit. And I'm going to move this point up here over just a bit. This is a little bit more muted than the effect that I had before. This is what I started with, and that's what I got to. So it's just adding a little bit of red, and it's just shifting the colors just a little bit. In the case of the image of my daughter here, it's a much more pronounced shift. But by playing around with these color tone curves, and even with the RGB curve like I did in this particular image, you can really create some very compelling, very interesting effects. Now that I've done that, what I want to do is I want to be able to save this effect so that if I have another image that I want to apply it to, I don't have to go through all of the work that I had with shaping the curves and doing all that sort of stuff. I want to be able to just save that effect so that I can click on an, a preset and have it instantaneously apply that effect with one click. So let me show you how to do that. Okay, to do that, I'm going to go up to my presets um, panel here, which is on the left side of my screen, and there's a plus button here. I'm going to click it and that will let me create a new preset. Now to do that, I'm gonna actually, the first thing it's gonna ask me for is a preset name and then the folder. I'm gonna actually create a new folder. I'm gonna call it cross-processed or cross-processing. And hit create. And then I'm gonna call this one, say yellow bright preset. Now, because I only adjusted the tone curve in this image, that's really the only thing I need to check. Actually, I have to check the tone curve and I also have to check the process version. And what that's going to do when I create that preset is when I click on it, it's only going to use the tone curve edits that I've made to this image as well as the process version. When you're creating presets, particularly within this new process, you need to make sure that this process version is checked so that it's using the 2012 process. Remember at the beginning of the video, I said that these tone curves, these color tone curves in Lightroom are only available in the 2012 process. So you need to make sure that this process version is checked. But checking tone, tone curve and process version and then just click create. And you can see that it creates a new folder called cross processing and there's a yellow bright preset within there. So if I go to a new image now, such as this image, I don't have to do any of the changes to the curves. All I have to do is click this yellow bright preset and my cross processed look is instantaneously applied. Just a single click and I can do it. So then I can create as many different cross processed looks as I want, save them all within this cross processing folder here in my presets and then I have access to them and I can just run through them very quickly to see if there's one that works with a specific image. So that's it for cross-processing in Lightroom. From here I'm going to turn to talking about the next panel in uh, the develop module which is the HSL pa panel located right below the tone curve here and I'm going to specifically spend time not talking about how it works with color in a color image, I'm going to actually talk about how it can be used to create some really great black and white images because there's a lot of black and white functionality within Lightroom. In the meantime, if you have any questions about this tutorial on cross-processing or on using the color tone curve tool, feel free to leave them either in the comment section of my blog at trappinglight.com or on my YouTube channel. And until next time, have fun cross-processing your images and thanks for watching.